I love that. That's the part-time job after school. <laughs> Life used to be so simple. Or was it? That looks so cute. Do you think Desi would carry my purse? I don't think so. He's a gangster. What you doing? Are you checking out my flowers? Do you like them? Do you approve? flower holds so much hope. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a good safe week. I had a good week and there's so many things I want to share with you this week. I went to the thrift store and I found so many interesting things and some people came up from Grand Rapids and they said to me, your home looks so big. I thought it was small, but it's so big. Well, my home isn't that big. I mean, it's only 1,300 square feet, but it got me thinking. I've lived in some pretty small places the last 10 years, and I've got some tricks I want to share with you. I've got 10 tips of how to make a small space look big. And so I want to show you what I got from the thrift store and where I put it. And then I want to show you what I have done to each room to try to make that room look a little bit more luxurious, cozy, and big. So I think we're going to have fun with this today. I also, at the end of the video, I want to give you an update on the dresses that you voted for last week. Oh, it was so much fun and thank you so much for being so kind. And it was like the old American Idol where you phone in your vote and oh, it was, it was so sweet that you did that for me. So I can't wait to show you the dress that I'm going to wear. You picked it and I know you probably already know which dress it is. But Big mess on the side of my house. reasons that I wanted to buy a house is I wanted to get my hands dirty in the dirt. I wanted to plant my balloon plants and my Shasta daisies and my beautiful hosta. I never thought that this day would come. When somebody walks through your front door, you want to give them a depth of field, something for them to look at that is about as far away as your home will allow. Now, when you have light colored walls, that makes that exercise very easy. So I would always suggest that your walls, they don't have to be white, but I would suggest that they be light because that's going to give such a huge feeling, airy, flowy, a cozy feel to the room. As you notice behind me, I have one wall that is very, very dark, but in my depth of field, because the room is very long, five windows, and I have a living room and a dining room combined, that dark wall stops that depth of field of being too exaggerated. So I think, I think it serves its purpose because it's dark, but I don't want anything else dark in the vicinity. <laughs> also to your flooring. You don't want dark rugs. If you're trying to make your apartment or your home look bigger, you want light, airy floors. that 
you choose are so important and they can play off your color scheme, the color of your sofa or your chairs, but predominantly you want those rugs to be cream or white or something very, very neutral. Every single book I've ever read about decorating to make things look bigger or every video I've ever seen about making a home look bigger always has, use a lot of mirrors, just put the mirrors everywhere. <laughs> okay, I do think that's true that mirrors do make the room look so much bigger, but I do think you have to be very careful with mirrors. I have a great big Spanish mirror over my fireplace in the living room but I don't have any other mirrors uh, in sight. When somebody walks into your home, they are taking in the mood of the home, how cozy it is, how much it reflects you, yourself, as a human being. They're taking in so many things. And then suddenly they look over and they see a reflection of themselves in a mirror. Now what does that do? It distracts them. It distracts them from noticing that, that beautiful folk art you have on your coffee table or that exquisite piece of art that you put in your dining room. They're sitting there thinking, oh, I should have got my hair cut. Oh, why did I wear this tie? You've distracted them with a mirror. So I have always said, yes, mirrors can open up a space, but use them very cautiously because it will set a mood and it will distract your guests because that's human nature. You look into a mirror, I look into a mirror and I immediately think, ooh, is my lipstick smeared? <laughs> Scientists have pretty much proven that when we see someone with a very symmetrical face, we decide they're good looking. Well, okay, going on that premise, I think a room is the same way. When we walk into somebody's home and we see that room is so beautifully crafted, it's so symmetrical, or maybe not even symmetrical, but everything has its proper place, spatially, like a puzzle. We find that room beautiful and comforting and cozy. So, Going on that premise, take a look at your room and use every inch of space you can, either with a plant, a piece of art, maybe with an accent of some kind with folk art, anything. Who says you have to, to hang clocks at a certain level or certain, you know, mirrors? Who says you have to hang anything uh, at a certain level? You can just do whatever you want but have it spatially connect to make sense. Sometimes when I look at a room, I almost see the room as a grid and everything fits in that grid. So spatially, it's very harmonious. It your furniture away from windows is so important. The more natural light that comes in your room, the larger the room is going to seem. So for those that put their furniture up against windows, that's really not the best way to go. So if you have windows, celebrate them. Don't put furniture in front of them. Don't put a lot of heavy drapes over your windows. If you want to make your home look small, how about dark rugs, dark walls, and heavy drapes? There you go. Your house is going to look microscopic. <laughs> if there is natural light coming into your home, decorate around it. Make that your focal point. That is the heart of your house. No matter what exposure you have, 
decorate around the light and you will love it. done a decor video where I have not begged you to illuminate all four corners of your room assuming that your room has four corners. <laughs> now I have 11 lamps in the room that I'm sitting in now which is a combination room of a living room and the dining room behind me and I have 11 lamps. I have 11 sources of light and they are in every corner. You cannot go wrong with a room. even a room that you do not like. If you illuminate all four corners of that room, you will love it. It will be so soothing. There are no shadows. Everything just looks warm and luxurious and your guests will feel so at home. Isn't this beautiful? This is a new Roseville vase that I have. This is Columbine and it's the most beautiful blue and when I saw it I thought it's so perfect for my fireplace mantle because it's playing off a painting that I have just sitting on the mantle next to the mirror. And I got this at the thrift store this week. This is a cute little dog. Somebody made this in ceramics in 1984. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So nobody in the world has this but me, I think. And I love it. Now why do I have these? Because one of the tricks to making your home seem large is making your guests' eyes go on a journey. So they're not just looking ahead and okay, there's the couch, there's the chair, and there's the TV. No, they're going on a journey. They're looking over here at the bookcase and then they're looking at that piece of art. Then on your coffee table, they're looking at some folk art. It's, their eyes are just dancing. That's why I love going to the thrift store so much. It gives so much personality and texture to your room, to your home. And I know you're thinking, why would a little trinket, why would a little piece of folk art make my room look bigger? Because it allows the people in that room to go on a journey with their eyes. That of all the offices that I've had in my homes, I think this one is my favorite. I just get the feeling that I have a lot of privacy here. It's incredibly quiet and, and I love it. And when I play music, I get to look out a little window and look at the sky. And at the Salvation Army the other day and I came across this painting. It looked like an Edward Hopper painting, but it was an empty chair and there were some golf clubs there and the light was coming through and it just spoke to me and I thought that would be a perfect piece of art for this small piece of wall that I have vacant in my dining room. If you want your room to look big, you will buy big art. Now that's not necessarily true with other things, but big art on a wall, oh my goodness, it just transcends your home. It transcends the room into any type of mood you want your guests to feel or if you want your art to represent who you are your art on your wall has so much power on how people feel about your home so don't take your art casually
One of the biggest lessons that I've learned in the last couple years when it comes to decorating is the power of continuity. And I learned this with my dining room table that I bought. It's a beautiful glass dining room table, mid-century modern, so it has these beautiful, lovely wood legs and that supports the glass countertop. And I got some faux white leather chairs to go with it. And why did I do that? Well, in the picture, it looked pretty in the picture, these white chairs that went with the wood and glass table. And at first I thought, yeah, that looks just, you know, seating for eight, that looks really nice. And then it just stopped working. And I realized that my there was no flow at all to the room anymore. There was, it was, it was like, well, that's wood, that's glass, and that's what? What is that? There was just no continuity. And when I ordered my new chairs that are wood chairs that match the table, I couldn't believe it. It was one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned. It's, it's this flow, it's, it's this continuity. that we feel about freedom most often has to do with the outside. So when we're trying to make our house feel spacious for us, like a, a place where we can breathe, we want to bring the outside in. And that's why bringing in plants is so important. Plants, they can fill in that grid. They can make your room symmetrical. They can make your room whimsical. It brings the outside in. If you have a corner of a room and you've got a lamp there and the lamp just looks goofy, put a plant by the lamp. I guarantee you the lamp suddenly will look like a Tiffany lamp, just waiting to be adored. I held off decorating this room until this week. I had no idea if I would ever be out here or what I would use this room for. But I have found in the last few months that this is my go-to place to read, to have my coffee in the morning, and to have lunch. I want to do a little video just called Ode to Jacqueline Smith. What a lovely, lovely sash dress that she created in the most beautiful color, wheatgrass. And then she has another version of it in black. But that's the dress that you picked for me. And it is absolutely lovely. And it's the dress that I felt the most elegant in. I have been watching Linda Vodder for the first time this year and I was watching her landscape the front of her home and when she started out I thought oh that's gonna be a mess and then halfway through I thought oh that's just terrible and now I see it completed and it's stunning it's beautiful it's something to aspire to and I realized she could visualize it I couldn't but she could, she had that talent. I wanted to share with you that this week I finished the planting on the north side of my house. And it's not anything special or unique. It's just planting by your house. But that brought me more joy than anything I've done in months and months, maybe even years. It brought me so much joy. I, I chose balloon plants and Shasta daisies and some hosta and some flock. And I just thought it looked so 
pretty and I did that. I, I planted it with my own two hands and I can't wait to see what it looks like in the years to come. And it brought me so much joy. And I have no talent when it comes to that. No originality. I can't visualize it. But I still loved it. And I still will always want to go out there and plant and, and create gardens. And maybe as time goes by, I'll get better at it. Maybe I won't. But I still love it. And so when I was picking out the dress for the wedding, when I saw that dress, on the website, I visualized myself in it. I, I visualized how that sash would go over the middle of my body. I could visualize what that V type cutting would look like. How elegant. You know, Albert Einstein wasn't the best mathematician. He wasn't the best scientist. But what he had that nobody else had was this ability to visualize that lightning hitting the train. He was a genius when it came to visualizing what could be. And that's what I think decorating is all about. If you can visualize what your room should look like, if you can visualize what your house is going to be like when your guest walks in, you've got it made. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It's your vision. And even if you stink at it, like how I do with my flowers, who cares? I can't tell you how beautiful life is when we really do and commit to what makes us truly happy no matter what anybody else thinks or says. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And please let me know how you feel about your home. Let me know if you're moving or have moved or downsizing. Just maybe share something about how you feel a house is a home. Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here.